again everyone. In this video we're going to dive into the chemistry of photography by doing silver printing on cotton paper. To begin we'll need to sensitize some paper. Start by placing a beaker on a magnetic stirrer and add to that 5 grams of ammonium chloride. Next add 50 milliliters of water and then add 5 milliliters of ethanol. Now add 50 milliliters of egg whites and begin stirring as fast as it can without splattering. The egg whites will be our binder for the ammonium chloride and paper. The water and alcohol are there to dissolve the salt and the egg white. It's important to mix this well for about 10 minutes. After everything is thoroughly mixed, it'll be time to filter the mixture. Set up for simple gravity filtration and pour in your mixture. The egg whites will slow the filtration down to a crawl. I found that using a paper towel works just as good and a lot faster. However, if you have time, most of it will go through the filter. Okay, we're now ready to set up our first bath. You'll need a tray big enough to fit the paper size you wish to print on. I'm using standard developer trays, but any plastic or glass tray will do. Add to the tray enough water to allow you to submerge a piece of paper in. Then add in the mixture you just filtered. Use a glass rod to mix everything well. Don't worry if bubbles form. Now we can begin to soak some paper. I'm using 100% cotton paper used for printing resumes. This paper is really strong, strong enough to get wet without falling apart. You do not have to use this paper, however whatever you use will need to be able to handle getting wet. Submerge a piece of the paper and let it sit for 10 minutes. While that is soaking we can build our next bath. Once again place the beaker on a stir plate and add the stir rod. Add to the beaker 100 milliliters of distilled water and then add 10 grams of silver nitrate. Stir until fully dissolved. Now set up again for gravity filtration. Filter your solution into your second tray filled with enough distilled water to submerge your paper. Move the tray around to mix. Your second bath is now ready. To make the third bath, repeat the steps that you used to make the second bath, but instead of silver nitrate, add 50 grams of sodium thiosulfate. The fourth and final bath is just water. After 10 minutes of soaking, remove the sheet of paper and hang it up to dry, or set it on some paper towels to dry. Then add another sheet of paper. Run through the first bath however many pieces of paper you wish to sensitize. The next step will be in the dark, so be sure to have your paper in an easily accessible place. The next step will need to be done in the dark or in dim lighting conditions. Take one of the dry sheets of paper and submerge it into the bath of silver nitrate. The ammonium chloride will react with the silver nitrate in a double displacement reaction to form ammonium nitrate and silver chloride. The silver chloride is not very soluble in water and will precipitate out of solution. However, it will stay in the paper due to the egg white binder. The fact that silver chloride does not dissolve in water is why we can't just add it to the egg whites and apply it directly to the paper. We need it to precipitate out into the paper. Leave the paper in the solution for a few minutes and then remove it from the bath and place it in a stack of paper towels to dry. Be sure that you use enough paper towels that light cannot pass through to get to the paper. Let the paper dry for several hours before moving on to the next step. Once the paper is dry, we can expose it to light to generate our image. If you have an enlarger, then you can use the paper as you would any regular photographic paper. Since most people probably don't have an enlarger, then we can bypass it by using printable transparency film you can buy at office supply stores. This film is made to be used in inkjet or laserjet printers as one side is slightly rough. Simply print the negative of whatever image you wish to use for the paper onto the transparency and then you're ready to go. To keep the paper and transparency flat against each other, I will be sandwiching them between two sheets of glass. Simply place the sensitized paper on the glass and then place the transparency with your negative image over the paper. Last, gently lay the top sheet of glass over the transparency. Now shine a strong light onto the paper or take outside to expose the sun. The silver chloride will decompose where the light hits it into elemental chlorine and elemental silver metal. 
only a very small amount decomposes at any one time, so you cannot detect any chlorine, nor are you in danger from it. However, to be safe, be sure to do this in a well-ventilated area. Exposure times vary depending on the light source, distance, and other factors. However, we're not making a latent print that will need to be developed later. The image develops before us. When you feel the image is done, turn off the light, remove the glass, and then remove the transparency and survey your image. If you like what you see, you can fix the image by placing it in the third bath of sodium thiosulfate. The thiosulfate fixes the image by reacting with the silver chloride that did not decompose and converting it to a soluble, non-light reactive salt. After about a minute in the fixer bath, place the paper in a water bath. This will dissolve any remaining water-soluble salts left in the paper, leaving behind the silver metal making up the image. After washing, set the image aside to dry. While it dries, you can try out different images and get a feel for the process. I find that two-tone images like this map I'm doing now work the best. The process gives prints an older, slightly faded look that works well with something like a map. What is great about this process is that it is relatively safe, especially if you're comparing it to other alternative processes like wet plate photography, which uses some pretty nasty stuff. However, it's not without some risks. I should note that silver nitrate will stain and irritate your skin if you get any on you, so be sure to wear proper protection like latex gloves and eyewear. The paper has an okay range of contrast, not as good as some others, but usable. As you use up the baths, you may start to find splotches and specks on your paper that do not darken. I found that when I filtered the silver nitrate bath, this problem went away. It's probably due to small particles of silver settling on the paper and blocking the light. For much more sensitive paper, you can change the ammonium chloride to an ammonium bromide or an ammonium iodide. Both of their silver compounds react much faster to light. To get an idea of how much detail the paper could show, I tried a couple contact prints using 35mm color film. Though the contrast was not great, the images could easily be made out. So here are all the images I made after they dried. I tried to get a good range of different images to show. I realized that going to all this trouble to print a black and white image that my printer can whip out in thousands of colors in a fraction of a minute seems crazy. However, there's something rewarding about developing your own prints that you can't get from hitting the print button. Plus, even though it's outdated today, watching the image develop is still magical, and understanding the chemistry behind it just adds to the experience. I hope you give this one a try, and as always, 